What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the first person shooter tutorial series, we're going to be going over the pause menu, a very, very important menu in our game. So as we come into our game here, we have all of our regular features that you've seen throughout the FPS tutorial series. We should be able to press the pause button, whether this be the start button on a controller, the P button on a keyboard, or whatever else. So when I press the P key here, I'm going to open up the pause menu. You will also see that the background their idle animation and all of their moving parts in this game are not moving anymore because the game is paused. We actually want to stop the game time so everything else in the world stops as well. That's how we know that we're paused. And then I can unpause as well by clicking the resume button. Then everything starts up again like normal. Additionally from here I want to be able to pause and exit to main menu. And when I do that we want to actually return to the main menu. So this is what we're going to be covering in today's episode. If you want to get caught up in the series before checking out how to implement this pause menu, I'll link you to this episode right here in the top right corner where you can check out everything we've done from headshot modifiers to enemy health bars, our mini map, and all that fun stuff. Alternatively, if you only care about the pause menu, that's perfectly fine. I would recommend that you watch this episode first, the main menu episode, so that you know how we do some of our menu logic. But it's not required, it would just be nice to have and tie things together. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. So this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to do most of the logic in the code today, but we are going to create the widget and fill out some things in the blueprint as well. Now, first thing I want to do is add an input that is actually going to trigger the pause menu and close the pause menu as well. And so if I go to my edit project settings, I can then go down to input and add an action mapping for our start input. That's what I call it. So press plus action mapping. I called this one start and I added an actual action mapping input and for that I chose the P key on the keyboard. We haven't gone over controllers yet in this series although we have in our other series so if you're familiar with those episodes you can feel free to add those inputs now but for now I'm just going to stay on the keyboard and I'm going to use my P key as my pause input. Now this input action is what we're going to use to trigger this so we need to bind this. It's important to note that this will work in Unreal Engine 4 and Unreal Engine 5. If you're using enhanced input, however, you will have to add an enhanced input action, add it to your mapping context, and bind that context to your character. I have episodes on enhanced input. If you're not familiar with that, you can go ahead and follow them if you want to check out the basic method of adding inputs using that method. But otherwise, just make sure that you have an input for your start. Once you do, we can go into Visual Studio, so I'm going to go to my FPS tutorial character.h and in here we want to have a function that we can call when the player presses this input. So what are we going to do when the player presses this input? I'm scrolling down to my functions and I'm going to make a new one. Start. Right here. So as the comment says, performs the start input logic. Basically, whatever we want to do when start is pressed. Notice I didn't call it pause. It doesn't really matter if you do, but think of it this way. This button could be used to skip cutscenes. It might be used to do other things that aren't just pause. So I kept it generic and called it start. So void start. Now once we have this function, we can go into our FPS tutorial character.cbp. Scroll down to our setup player input component function. This is where we bind all of our input actions to functions on the character class. So I have them separated out by these comments and I've added a new one today where we're binding the start input action and calling the start function. So we need to use our player input component and call bind action on it. Then we need to pass in the action that we're binding. This is going to be our start input action. So make sure whatever you put in your project settings goes inside the string right here. For me, that is just start. Then we need to determine what type of action is going to trigger this. So IE underscore press means when we press the input. If you did IE underscore release, that's when we release the input. I want to spawn the pause menu and perform the start input logic when we press the key. So I'm going to use IE underscore pressed. Then we have the object that we are going to be invoking the function on, and that is this. We want to use this class, this FPS tutorial character, to open the pause menu. And then lastly, we need the function that we're going to call and that is AFPS tutorial character clone clone start. Once you have this, we need to go and make our start function. So I'm going to scroll down some more until I get to my start function. So here we go. Void AFPS tutorial character clone clone start. 
Now, what do we want to do when we call the start function? I want to open the pause menu, so I need a way to open the pause menu. I'm going to have the game mode reference open the pause menu. There's a few reasons for this that I'll get into later as we get into more advanced logic with the game mode and multiplayer. But for now, just know I want to make a function on the game mode. That way we can open the pause menu from there. So I'm going to go to my FPS Storo game mode.h. We haven't been in here much in the series. I'm going to add a function in here below my constructor called void open pause menu. Now, I've also made this function a U function that is of type blueprint implementable event. This means we can call it in the code, but we fill out the behavior for it in the blueprint. We don't need to do anything in the FPS tutorial game mode.cpp because it is a blueprint implementable event, as I just mentioned, so we don't have to fill out the function in here. So at this point, let's go back to our FPS tutorial character.cpp and we can try and use our game mode class here, but it's not gonna work because we don't have it included in our character. So if we go up to the top of this file, I want to add an include for our FPS tutorial game mode.h. So I can do that by just going to the bottom of my include list, pound include, FPS tutorial game mode.h. Now once I have that done, I will be able to use the game mode reference so we can go back to our start function. And what we're going to do is get a reference to that game mode. We can do this by calling get world get auth game mode or get authority game mode. This is a good way to get the game mode on the server and single player instances of a game. However, this will return a basic game mode class and we want to convert that or cast that to our game mode, which is a FPS tutorial game mode. So I'm going to take this result, put it in parentheses and add a cast cast to a FPS tutorial game mode, then the get world get auth game mode. And we're going to set a variable equal to this. If this cast succeeds and we're able to get a game mode and cast it to this type, this variable will then store a reference to our game mode. And that's how we're going to call our open pause menu function. So using auto game mode ref and setting that equal to this result will allow us to get a reference to our game mode. Note that auto here just means the type will be figured out for us. It's going to be a FPS tutorial game mode pointer. You could easily put that in as well but auto will convert and make the type for us. Now, additionally, I've put this whole thing inside of an if statement because this variable will be null pointer if it doesn't succeed. And if it doesn't succeed, we don't want to try and call a function on it. Otherwise we will crash. If it is valid, if it does have a game mode reference, then it will succeed and we will be able to go in here. But to avoid a crash, we put it inside of an if statement. So if this is valid, we then call game mode ref open pause menu. Now we have to fill out what this does in the blueprint but first things first, we need to create our pause menu widget. So let's go back into the editor. So the editor is back open. We want to go to wherever we want to create this widget. I'm going to go to my blueprints widgets folder, and I'm going to go to menus in here. I'm going to add user interface widget blueprint. And if you're in Unreal Engine 4, that will create it for you. If you're in Unreal Engine 5, you'll have to pick the parent class or the root widget here. I'm going to pick my user widget. And once I do that, I will be able to name my widget. So I made it called pause menu. Go into this widget once you create it and you'll get something like this. In Unreal Engine 4, you will have the root widget here and then a canvas panel In Unreal Engine 5, you'll just have the root widget. You can make this widget look however you want. Of course, it's up to you, but I will show you everything I did to create this widget here on screen. So the first thing I did was add a canvas panel, which you can get to by searching in the palette then drag it into the root widget and you'll have a canvas panel here. Now this canvas panel is just for me as it gives me an idea of what it's gonna look like on the screen. By default, canvas panels are set to the screen size and fill screen. So when you drag a canvas panel in without any changes here on the right side, you have your space that you can work in that will be displayed on the screen. Now in here, I've added a text element for the title. So simply drag the text onto the canvas panel and this one I called main menu title, but that actually should be pause menu title. Pause menu title. Then for the anchor, I set it to the top center, which just means it's going to move the pivot point to this point, the top center. And then I've changed the alignment to be 0.5 and 0.5 so that it's not working from the origin, but instead the center of this object, because otherwise it will look like this. It will go off the origin, which is the top left of the text. So alignment makes it work off of that percentage of the text element. And in this case, 0.5 is half the X and half the Y. So we get this nice result. I've updated the position just to give it a little bit of offset from the top. 
and a check size the content just so that the box resizes with the text size. I made the text pause menu and then you can check out my font settings below if you want to copy them. I'm not going to go over everything as this is really just for me, but feel free to slow this video down and change your settings to match mine if you want. After the text here, I have a button that I've added. It's a basic button and I've called it the resume button. I've anchored this one to the center with a position of negative 200. Here are my sizes, alignment. By default, I haven't changed anything with the style or anything. It's a very basic button, but do make sure that it is a variable because we are going to need to use this in the graph. Then I've added text to that button. You can literally drag text onto a button and you'll get this right here. So I called it resume button text change my text to say resume again feel free to slow this video down and check out all the settings i have but it's a pretty basic text element this is just so we can indicate to the player what that button will do now i've added another button called exit button and it is also a variable anchored to the center again here are my values pretty simple stuff i have a text on that button that i've called exit button text i put the text to exit the main menu here are my settings once more. And lastly, I have an image that I've called the background image, and I've anchored it to the full screen size right here. And I've set all the offsets to be zero. The Z order to be negative one, so it renders behind all the other widgets that are on here, so the title, the buttons, so on and so forth. For my tint, I gave it all zeros, but an alpha of 0 0.5 so we can see through it. That way we can check to see that the game is actually paused behind the menu. The rest of it is all basic stuff. And there we go. Now, we want to go into the graph and determine our logic that we want to do in the pause menu. First things first, we need our event construct. When you come in here, you might already have this, but if you don't, you can just simply type event construct. This is what happens when the widget is created. And when it's created, we want to pause the game first and foremost. Unreal has a function to do this. So we can just call set game pause and check it. The game is paused when this menu opens up. Now I also want to show the mouse and focus this menu when it's opened. So I can do so by calling set input mode game and UI. And this will allow us to focus that widget needs a player controller, which this is a single player game for now, so we can type get player controller and leave it at index zero. For the in widget to focus, we can use self. We want to focus the pause menu, which is what we're in, so that's a reference to self. We don't need to lock the mouse mode. This just means can you go in and out of the viewport? If you lock it, you can't go out of the viewport. And we don't want to hide the cursor during the capture because I want the player to be able to see where their mouse is so they can select either resume or exit the main menu. And at this point, I also want to set show mouse cursor to be true. This is because even though we're not hiding it during capture, it's not considered capture when we initially focus this widget, only when we click on the screen. So we also need to make the cursor visible immediately. So I'm going to drag off my player controller, type set show mouse cursor, and then just check that box right there. And that's our event construct. Now we want to fill out our resume and exit buttons. These are super simple. So go back to your designer, go to each of your buttons. I'll go to resume button first. Scroll down and go to the events section. Press the plus sign on on pressed and it will generate this event for you. So when this is either clicked or selected by a controller or gamepad, we can do this logic. And what I want to do first is unpause the game. We're resuming, so we don't need to be paused anymore. So I'm calling set game pause, but not checking the pause Boolean. Then I'm also calling remove from parent because remove from parent removes this widget from whatever parent element it's in. And so if it's on the viewport, removing it from the viewport will hide the widget. Really, it will clean up the widget as well. So might as well destroy that widget since we don't need it anymore. And we get this right here. Now, lastly, we want to do our exit button logic. So if we go back to the designer again, go to our exit button, go to on press, press the plus sign, we get on press exit button. 
Here, I want to set the game to not be paused because even though we're going to be going to the main menu, we're not going to be paused anymore. So I still want to disable it. So set game pause is false. Then I want to call open level by name and pass in the name of the level I'm trying to load. My default level is main menu. So I'm going to call main menu as my level name. Now our pause menu is complete. So the last thing that we need to do is trigger this pause menu. And I said we're gonna do that in our game mode BP. So go to your blueprints and go to your base game mode BP. In here, I don't have any events or anything prior to this episode. So go anywhere you want in this graph and we can search for our new event now that we made as blueprint implementable event in the code. For me, I called it open pause menu. So event open pause menu. And it will bring up this node right here. What we want to do is create the pause menu widget and we can do so by typing create widget and then going to the class and selecting pause menu. From here we can drag off the return value and type add to viewport which will add it to the player screen and we'll be good to go. So when we press the start button we'll call this function which will create the pause menu. Pause, resume pause, exit the main menu. We can add one more improvement. So if we go back to our pause menu and go to our resume button here, we want to hide the mouse and refocus the actual gameplay when we go back to the game after exiting the menu. So to do this, we can call get player controller, get this node right here, and then call set input mode game only. Plug that in. Then we want to not show the mouse cursor, so we're going to call set show mouse cursor, but this time we're going to leave it unchecked or false. So now when we come into our game, if we pause it and then we hit resume, the mouse goes away on its own and we have control of the character again, just like we'd want. If we exit the main menu, go into campaign, we still have the mouse cursor available and we're not controlling the window. Let's go to our main menu widget. So menus, main menu. And let's go to where we open our level. So that's my campaign button. I'm gonna to go to the graph on press campaign. And in here, I wanna call the same behavior that I set up in the resume button. So these three nodes. So we're going to set the input mode to be game only with the mouse being hidden when we enter the campaign mode. So campaign works well the first time. Let's try exiting to the main menu and then going to campaign and it works well the second time. I hope you enjoyed creating your pause menu, and I hope you see what's in store for your game as a whole as we combine more elements together like the pause menu, main menu, transitioning between levels, and all these fun things. If it helped you, please subscribe, and please consider joining the Patreon YouTube membership or Discord subscriptions like so many kind souls in this community have. I'm really, really grateful for you guys, and that helps out the series more than anything else you can do. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. There's a link in the description, and all the support in there is completely free. Like I said, guys, that's all I got, so thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.